I'd always aspired to become an architect and put my ideas on paper, allow somebody else to bring them to life. But being in Eastern Europe during the rise of socialism, what you want and what you're given are often different things. And the only way you can change your destiny is for somebody else to change it for you. This brings me to my uncle Vlad. As I understand it, he's a distant relative of my father's who we lost years ago during the revolution. And although we never saw my uncle often, when my mother got word of his visits, she would do her best to impress him, often spending days tidying up before he arrived, making sure that any chip china was placed out of sight, and Vlad had anything he wanted during his short visits. But when he visited in the spring of 1960, I had no idea that those were my last days of working the state-run assembly plant. You see, when Vlad visited and saw me drawing schematics for an improvement to the assembly line that I'd only been working at for six months, we started talking. Now, these sort of improvements normally come from the top down, but this was run by the state, so that never happened. I could hear my boss saying right now, There is no improving Soviet perfection! But nonetheless, here I was putting ideas on paper. And when Vlad took interest, I was happy to explain. Little did I know this conversation was going to change my life forever. See, Uncle Vlad wasn't called Vlad at all. He was actually in charge of the small town by the name of Vladivostok, and the state wanted him to move on to a new patch of land. Nothing more than dirt and rock and have him be in charge, developing it into something better for the Republic. But Vlad, as he explained it, still had plans for Vladivostok. He needed someone else to see to this duty. For the Republic, somebody younger, brighter, and this would be much more suited to my skills. Little did I know he also needed somebody gullible enough to take on this responsibility, because the state will be watching. So here we are, in charge of this patch of dirt, with 10 million rubles given to me by my Uncle Vlad, and a small task before us, to build a village, then to build a town, and finally build a city. Something Republic can be proud of, but I've been told, whatever I do, Don't waste Vlad's rubles. Because, even though he said he was giving it to me, I feel like this is much more of a loan that we'll have to pay back sometime in the future. G'day mate, and welcome to Workers' Resources Soviet Public. What is Workers' Resources Soviet Public, I hear you ask? Well, that's a good question, along with a very hard to answer question. At its heart, it's a city builder of sorts, and the difficulty can range from peaceful city building, something akin to SimCity or City Skylines, but depending on the game setting, you can unlock a whole new realm of gameplay options. Take something as simple as placing a section of housing in some of these other games. You zone an area, and like magic, some external developer comes in, plays down a house, and runs off with all the profits. Here in the Republic, we can have none of that. So, first you must choose where the house is placed, like exactly where it's placed. And then you can either pay for somebody else to build this building with rubles, or to maximize profits for the Republic, we can build it ourselves. Which means trucking in all the materials, making sure there are enough workers on site, or delivering them via bus if needs be. And then when it's all done, I really hope you planned where the new people are going to work, how they're going to get power, water, food, and the likes. Can't forget education as well. Because if their demands are not met, they'll either leave your estate or turn to a life of crime. And as the Gulag was shut down last year, we better get to work on building a prison. And then there's the resource management side. This ranges from everything like how are we going to get coal for the heating plant, all the way up to making steel and finally cars, even boats to sell to other states. Oh, and did I mention water and power? Nuclear power, of course, here in the Republic. But also there is the darker side of things to manage, like sewage and trash. So with the introduction out of the way, let's talk about the game settings and the map choices. But before I do that, I want to ask a favor, a quick favor if I could. And that being, well, can I borrow a like? I'd just like to borrow a like early in the video. If you're not enjoying the video or didn't think the video was worth your like, by all means, you can have it back. But for the moment, can I just borrow it? So the game settings are what I like to call rubalistic mode. So we have realistic mode with some small changes. Those being that people are just normal amounts of unhappy when I mess up, uh, but also I've left disasters on, which is a new setting and I might need a balance. I've heard stories of people's whole towns falling over in a single earthquake. Now with my massive amount of time in city builders, as well as logistics games, and of course extensive experience of workers and resources, I've chosen these sort of settings to start with, but I do need to set some expectations straight. Firstly, Workers and Resources Soviet Republic is a very slow game to play, and as this is designed to be a let's play, I do reserve the right to disable realistic mode just so I can pay for some construction, as that's the only feature I really want access to. This as an option to both speed up gameplay and because the game is not forgiving at all. You'll see as we get further in the game, but the order of operations is important, and some things might work one way but not the other, so you can be forced to either remove everything and start again, 
or work around the spanner the game has thrown into the system. Next in our expectations list, I should cover how often we plan on having episodes. And I'm going to aim for two and a half per week. So now's a great time to hit subscribe if you haven't already. На здоровье! Why two and a half per week? Well, I'd love to do three, but I expect I'd fall short. So let's put it another way. I'd like to get to episode 100 by Christmas. So that's 44 weeks away, which is also, I'm going to point out that there's a playlist in the description and also in the pinned comment below. So maybe you should bookmark that for future reference. Now let's talk about some of the things past JD has been doing in the background. G'day mate and welcome to the Republic with me, JD. This is our little slice of um dirt. Dirt and rock that um Vlad has put in charge of. Well, technically the state has put us in charge of, and Vlad's just um offloaded that job to me. Yes, uh, we need to talk about our republic. We need to talk about our little slice of dirt. But um, I need to talk through today's plan. Today's plan is I want to get my very first village up and at least planned, not necessarily built, but at least planned. So that's going to be um the main core of today's episode. On top of that, I'm going to, need to talk through a whole bunch of things because this is probably going to be a lot of a new game to a lot of you. So by all means, um except that there's going to be a little bit of explaining with today's episode. Also, I should mention very quickly, or even though Pastor Jenny might have mentioned in the prologue, that it's a slow game. It's a slow game, so you're going to have to be patient. Also, I'm probably going to miss an item or two. Maybe not provide enough um, description about what certain things are. By all means, if I skip something, I'm a little bit light on details. Uh, ask down in the comments. Ask down in the comments. I will be sure to address them in future episodes. So, let's talk about the GUI first. First off, we have... um. Our $10 million gift from Uncle Vlad. Yep, yeah, it feels more like a loan, but we're going to call it a gift. It's it's our seed money. It's our um, our investment. I'm pretty sure he's going to treat it like an investment. Yes, so we have our $10 million. I have spent some of it. We'll talk about what I've spent it on uh, in just a second. Also, we have a $2 million NATO loan. Well, NATO dollars, yes. Because um we're in the Republic, we have a couple of border connections. And actually, if we bring up the mini-map right here... It's not a mini map. I've made it I'm sure it's a maxi map. Uh, we have two borders that are connected to, well, the Republic. Also, two borders that are connected to NATO. And if I just click over here very quickly, we can see that, um, well, I need to get to here before I can spend any of that NATO money, which is not exactly close. Oh, technically, actually, that one's closer. Yeah. Yeah, but a short click on the mini-map is an awful lot of distance. Um, yeah, it's all the way over there. Yeah, yeah, they, nothing nothing is close. Nothing is close in this game. Uh, it, the map is actually quite large. Actually, there's a tiny little one down here. Oh, yeah, there's an itty-bitty one down there. Okay, so uh, I need to talk about the GUI. So we have our money. We obviously have the date. Uh, we have game logo, you know, normal speed, fast speed. We have the current temperature. Also, the wind speed. We have how many people I don't have. We have how many unemployed workers. We have health. We have, uh, well, their happiness. At the moment, their happiness is zero, which is perfect because it's probably the highest it's going to be for a long time. Uh, we do have some shortcut tools, which are customizable that I've put up here. We'll talk about those as I go through them. We also have our tool list down here of all the different buildings, all the different options. We're going to talk about those one at a time as well. Uh, also, we have down here. Down here is probably an important one. This is uh, to okay construction, okay? At the moment, I have uh, everything selected to build for from resources. Because we're playing in realistic mode, I can't build things with money or with rubles at this stage. And everything's set to non-active construction, i.e. I can plan things freely and nobody will start going around and building it. Uh, also, we have a couple of views down here. We have a wireframe view for those of you who like building on a grid. Uh, let's turn that off cool wireframe yep so i have a wireframe grid on top of that if i just select a road or something so we have something in our hand we can press f1 again and then it actually puts things on uh, a magnet so you actually have to build on the grid that's entirely optional i'm going to obviously be choosing to not build on a grid also we have the topographic view that'll let you see uh the different height maps it's going to be very, very important as we get on in the game because things like sewerage need to flow downhill. Uh, next off, we have underground, which very, very much helps with planning out that sewerage. Last off, we have snapping. Snapping is to uh, make sure that a couple of roads are near one another or train tracks or power poles or different things. They sort of align themselves to be close to their neighbors, which is going to be important because um, I've done just a tiny bit of planning. 
Tiny bit of planning right here. Uh, I have some basic planning in and started. And first off, we need to talk about the roundabouts. The roundabouts are going to be very, very important because traffic is something we're going to have to deal with. It's so important that um, that's where I spent my little bit of money leveling out the terrain because I went and made a blueprint. A blueprint of this roundabout so I can copy and paste it because I'm going to need needing uh, several of them as we keep building our Republic. So we have this over here that I can come over here, copy anytime I want and go and place elsewhere in the Republic. Now let's talk about, um, well, our two border connections. We have two border connections here. One is, uh, let's go with a smaller one. Well, let's go with a smaller one. We have one connected to Rusky. A Rusky border connection, uh, let's just do a couple of things. One, is, this is our source for all our materials. So we're gonna need to be able to build things, which is gonna need, you know, things like steel, which we can only ever get from the border because we don't make our own steel yet. On top of that, uh, it's gonna need bricks and boards and all sorts of food. Food, food is gonna be important. Wine, well, sorry, there's no wine, but there's definitely alcohol. Yes, all the things come from the border. So I'll need to have a truck come over here to pick up goods to bring it somewhere that we need it inside the Republic to get building done. Hence, I've plugged it into a road. On top of that, it's gonna be our source for our foreign workers. Foreign workers are a very, very bad workforce. Very, very pathetic workforce. They're pretty much the people who couldn't find a job in their own state have had no option but to walk to the border and then hope somebody will hire them uh, at the border connection. It turns out I have no other option, so we're gonna be hiring those those people. Uh, on top of that, this particular one has a power connection, which I'm going to max out. This says I can import 18 megawatts. I don't have a connection to it currently, so I'm gonna be importing absolutely nothing. But um, every bit of power that I buy is gonna cost me 41 rubles. So I need to also keep that in mind that the more power we import, the more it's gonna cost us. Yes, I need to make that money up somehow. Over on this side, I have my second border connection. Uh, this is Vladivostok. Obviously, Uncle Vlad is right next door so we can keep a close eye on us. And he has um, also provided a wonderful border connection so we can uh, import goods from him. I'm sure that'll be very, very profitable for, for him. But it also has a train connection. Train connection is gonna be very, very important so we can buy in goods in larger mass, also sell goods, hopefully, in a larger mass as well. And he's um, insisted Downline demanded that we hire workers from um, his border connection. Yes, he wants to make sure that we he, he can get some of that money back one way or another, even if that means that he has to insist that we have um, his foreign workers hired first. So uh, that's our two border connections. I have hooked up the trains, I have hooked up the roads, and we have a very, very basic start. But before I get to my basic start, I need to be able to actually build things. So we're going to jump in the construction industry, and I'm going to choose a free construction office. Now, the construction office doesn't actually build anything. It's literally somewhere to park the vehicles so we can build things in the not-too-distant future. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here I can buy new vehicles uh, and we can choose what vehicles to go in here. We'll come back to that in a second because I need a couple of other things before we get too much further into the game. Uh, we're going to have to, under the road vehicles, I'm going to need a refueling station because, well, when we buy vehicles, they come without fuel. You need to get some fuel. They have a little bit of fuel, enough to get them from the border to somewhere they're going, but then I need to fill them up. So we're going to have to uh, definitely put in some way for them to get some fuel on top of that i need a road depot a road depot is literally somewhere for me to park vehicles that have no real other use it's, it's basically a giant parking lot uh, i can give them orders but uh they're much limited in their orders it's much like a you know a bus route go a go b go c but i can give them some orders like you know pick up steel and drop off steel and that'll just they'll do that forever the catch is um they're going to have to always be either at A or B or C. One thing that I can do is I can set up a distribution office, which is under uh, that one. I do get a couple of free distribution offices. Being that these buildings are free, they're not terribly good, but they're free. Now, I do need to set this up before I forget, because this is going to be very, very important. We're going to have to buy a vehicle. We're going to have to have a oil tanker. And we're gonna have to buy a cysteine truck. Now, a cysteine truck can supply, can move around liquids. I want to grab one of these, and I need to tell you, whoop, the game's unpaused. That's bad. Okay, we need to keep the game paused. Cool. I need to tell you to go to the customs office. I need to tell you to load things, and then I need to go to fuel station and unload things. And I want you to keep that fuel station 80% full. Okay, so that's gonna be the very first vehicle I need to buy because I need to have those fuel stations full. I also need to do a few other things. Uh, one is going to be putting a second distribution office uh, all the way over 
here. That'll do. And also, uh, can I get a fuel station uh, over here as well? Cool. All right. Toolbars across the top. Uh, let's talk about those really quickly. So one is a pipette tool. Um, I play a lot of factory games. I'm very, very used to the pipette tool. It's basically a mandatory requirement for me nowadays. So this will just let me click on a building and I get one of those buildings in my hand. I'd love more construction offices, but I'm only allowed seven, so uh, seven it is. Second one is a tool for measurement. Very, very important. Very much helps with measuring things out. Uh, the biggest reason we're going to having this is um, it has a height over cursor written up there, which is very, very important for sewerage because it all has to flow downhill. Obviously, we have deconstruction tool. Uh, this will just deconstruct whatever I hover my mouse over, which is very, very dangerous. I have a specialized one. This will just unmark roads for construction. Uh, this one will do paths. This will assign construction tasks, and that's about it for right now. Okay, speaking of the next things I need to do, I need to also make sure that our border connection is not going to be a bottleneck. Now, I'm going to be setting up a whole lot of um, construction crews to do a whole lot of construction. And when they do a whole lot of construction, they have to get all the materials from the border. When they get the materials from the border, that's perfectly fine, but it's going to lead to um, potentially a large bottleneck. A large bottleneck with getting vehicles in and out, which I don't want to have. So, what I need to do is I need to make sure that rather than potentially somebody coming over here and getting like one ton of steel, when they could carry 10, I need to um, pick up steel from here in bulk and dump it somewhere else. So we're going to have a couple of general cargo containers. Uh, they're going to be the free ones, which are horrible, but they're free. So they're inside my price range, uh, mainly because, well, they don't require construction. It's literally a fence and a patch of dirt. We're going to pop down four of these. The reason I'm going to have four of these is there are going to be four main materials that go into an open storage. Uh, one is going to be steel, which I'm going to rename to be steel. So we all know it's steel. Second one is gonna be uh, br oh, prefab panels. So we're gonna set prefab panels to be 100%. I'm gonna call you uh, prefab, cool. Third one is gonna be bricks. So we're gonna limit them out again. I'm going to select, uh, no. Uh, Bricks, and we're going to call you Bricks. The last one is going to be boards, uh, wooden boards, as in plywood. Yep, we're going to use a lot of plywood, building a lot of things, so um, we're going to need to have boards in stock, ready to go at all times. Now I have that planned out, I can now know that my road is going to have to come through here. And just as importantly, I want to connect my little road to my other three roads, because, well, these are dirt roads currently, which are fine. There's nothing wrong with a dirt road, except a dirt road gets um, very muddy during, um, well, rain. So I want to upgrade these roads as quickly as possible to gravel roads, which brings us to our fourth construction item. Our fourth construction item being, well, gravel. I'm going to need gravel. I'm going to need a lot of gravel. Now, gravel, we do also have a aggregate storage, a, a free aggregate storage. In fact, as far as I know, I have an infinite number of these guys. The problem is um, unloading a a aggregates, unloading things like gravel, very, very easy. You bring the truck in, it lifts up the back, it all falls out. It's very, very quick. Loading gravel, on the other hand, slightly, slightly more difficult. When it comes to loading gravel, you need to um, have the guys get out of the truck, grab a couple of shovels and start shoveling it in. Now, that would be fine unless you're loading 25 tons at once, at which point it takes some time. So I don't want to have a free gravel storage. I could have them grab all the gravel from the border, but we're going to go through hundreds of tons worth of gravel. I have a lot of roads I need to build. Also, gravel is a main ingredient under a lot of buildings. So I want to have a truck uh, aggregate loading, which we're going to be putting right here. Now, you're going to notice this is the first building that's going in as a, you know, see-through transparent building because it hasn't been built and it actually get it built. I also need to hook it up to a storage. Uh, we're going to go with the 200 ton storage, which is, uh, believe it or not, Probably not enough for our use, but um, it's what I'm going to be building for right now because it's reasonably cheap compared to some of the others. Uh, on top of that, you will notice there's a conveyor that's going from one building to the other. Can I just rotate you a little bit? Oh. And I'm going to throw you right there. Now, uh, you're going to need a road, and I want to get the road out of there, into there. Cool. Done. So uh, we can now build both of these, but there's a couple more things I need to plan for. One is I want to have a train unload. Yes, I want to have a train unload and I want to plug the train unload into 
uh, well, this preferably. And this is just about planning for the future. I want to make sure that uh, T to flip and then rotate you around. And let's go with half time to put you there. Uh, no, we'll put you. I think I'm going to end up screwing future, future JD no matter what. Okay, we're going to dump you there. So you can ship the gravel into here if I hook you up to the train tracks, if I build, um, well, the train tracks themselves, if I build a train construction office. Because um, turns out you actually need a train to build the train. Well, a, tra a track layer. A track layer to build trains. Yes, yes, or train tracks at least. Uh, I need to have this train construction office, and I need basically that conveyor built but i feel like i'm gonna have a problem uh because i feel like that's gonna cut off my tracks uh can i no both of them are at this side uh well let's just no i have connections over there okay all right so we're gonna put you here for the moment, I'm not worried about getting any of this built. Uh, so we're going to make sure that this is all set to suspend. And I'm going to select uh, all of that. I don't want any of that built. I don't want it built right now. I do want this built. And I want, well, this building built, which I can't seem to highlight. Uh, continue construction. Okay. I want to have uh, both those built. Now, one other thing I'm going to need to get just this very first setup, the very first things I need to, you know, start building things uh, reasonably quickly is I'm going to need power because um, you're going to need power to run the conveyor belt. So I need to put in a power connection, which means we're going to have to jump over to an electrical substation and I'm going to intentionally dump you here. Cool. Uh, yep, you can face that way and you're hooked in with a footpath. I need to get a footpath from there into there so well the construction vehicles can drive over there and provide construction effort to uh the electrical substation but electrical substations are going to require power it actually requires a connection to some sort of power connection so i'm going to be running a power line hopefully out of my way probably not i'm probably going to end up having to demolish this in the future run this across the border and then plug it into this electrical station Electricity is something we should cover very, very quickly. Uh, it comes in two varieties. It comes in high voltage and it comes in medium voltage. Uh, high voltage is, you know, big power poles, 15 megawatts a piece. Small voltage, medium voltage is much smaller. You know, it's like 0.65 up to 2 megawatts. I'm choosing to run a 2 megawatt line, so I don't have to worry about it. Hopefully in the future, and you're going to find that as a very, very common uh, choice of mine. Because in the future, eventually... At some stage, I have no idea what I'm going to plan there. And if I need to upgrade a power line, there's no quick, easy click to upgrade, just like there is no quick, easy click to upgrade in real life. You need to use the demolition tool to remove the power line that you've already laid underground to then use a new power line to put that in its place. It's not quite like real life. Generally, they use the existing power line to drag through a new power line, but that's assuming you dug the hole deep enough and big enough for the larger gauge wire, which you probably didn't. So, um, yes, yes, uh, very, very similar to real life. But uh, we can see straight up that that particular power line is going to cost me 89 work days, four and a half tons worth of steel, plus some electrical components. And I'm going to say start construction. Cool. That's all planned. Uh, and just to confirm, batch start construction, definitely highlight. All right, so that's our start. That's our basic start. We want to have our we want to have our raw resources put into these storages, which I haven't set up. I also need to make sure that I have access to four more re raw resources. Yep, yeah, four more. So I need to unpause the game so a little fuel truck can get moving. Uh, I need to have access to uh, gravel, which we've already done. We've got a storage for gravel. Uh, on top of that, there are three other things that I need to have uh, I need about access to to get most buildings done. One is going to be bitumen. The other one is going to be cement. And the last one is going to be workers. Yeah, workforce. We look at this particular building. It needs to have work days. It needs to have concrete, which is cement. It needs to have gravel. It needs to have asphalt. Same with this one. We need to have gravel. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, concrete, gravel, steel, mechanical components, and asphalt, and a whole lot of work days. That is 786 work days. That is 786 full eight-hour days. Uh, eight-hour a 786 full eight hour shifts. 
Now, obviously, if you have 100 people, uh, then it's only seven days. Well, we'll call it eight days. 100 people, eight days, done. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is something I need to keep in mind. But yes, I need to have access to both concrete and also bitumen, which are things that I can't store currently. Also, foreign men, well, any sort of work power, foreign workers, was what I have to deal with for right now. But um, I can't store workers either, so I need to deal with um, storing the items that I can. So we should have fuel in the fuel station. We do which means I'm going to go into this distribution office and we're going to be buying four new vehicles. Our vehicles are going to be an open hull. The reason we're going to have an open hull is they carry steel, they also carry boards, they carry prefab panels, and they carry bricks. So I'm going to have three of those and their job is going to be go to the border. I want them to load things and then I want them to go here, 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 and here and I want them to unload things. Uh, and that's their only job in life. Yeah, they're going to go to uh, those connections. They're going to bring in steel. They're going to bring in bricks. They're going to bring in prefab panels. And they're going to bring in boards after they get fuel. Hence why I had to set up the fuel station first. And that's going to be their only job in life. Now, with that out of the way, I need to get some construction crews in here. So I need to have um, a whole bunch of construction crews. And I need them to do a whole bunch of things. For the right now, I need to tell them where to get their materials from. So I'm going to tell them to get everything from the border. But... They can get steel from the steel container. They can get the bricks or the prefabs from the prefab container. They can get their bricks from the brick container. And they get their boards from the board container. On top of that, I need to, uh, well, tell them they can search very, very far for all the things that I want them to auto build. And then we're going to copy that assignment to uh, all of the other ones. And I want to copy their source buildings to all the other ones as well. That way I don't have to repeat that process. We're doing a little bit of copy paste. But I then need to um, set up my workers, my different types of construction offices. The first one is going to be the road builder. Because uh, I want to get the road builder up and running as fast as possible. We need to have you have a certain amount of vehicles. We need to buy some vehicles. Uh, the first one is going to be a bulldozer. Uh, we're going to get a couple of the S100s. Now, the reason I'm going to go for an S100 over the KT50 is um, we can see that they have a maximum speed and an empty weight and blah, 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 blah. But we can see the bulldozer speed per level. So this has a level of 22. This one has a level of 28. 28 means goes faster. Also costs more rubles. We're gonna get two of those. Uh, we're also going to buy in this particular one. I need a, stop that. Uh, you have a empty weight of six tons. So you weigh six tons. I went open hull and you can load a vehicles on a flatbed of nine tons, four tons, uh, 13 tons, seven tons. Uh, top speed of 70, top speed of 62. Uh, it's only like a thousand rubles different, so I guess I'm going to buy one of those. And the last thing I'm going to need is a dumper, and we're going to buy the biggest, fattest dumper I can. He's slow at only 35 kilometers per hour, but um, if I click on a vehicle... Oh, you stopped. Please don't stop. They're running on dirt roads. They only drive at 35 kilometers an hour, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, can I buy one of them? It was a dumper and you're gonna be doing one of them. Okay, this particular one is the road builder, so I'm not gonna have you do any buildings or any conveyors or pipelines or any factory connections or electric wiring, and I'm gonna have you deliver mechanisms only with trucks. The idea being that, well, the flatbed's gonna sit in here, I'm gonna load the bulldozers onto the flatbed and then do the deliveries that way, cool. With that out of the way, I wanna get my very first gravel road being there to there. And I need to just gonna quickly do with that. Start that construction place. All right. First construction office done. Second construction office is gonna be the general builder office. Okay. The general builder office. Uh, I need to auto search. Max that out. Three thousand. Cool. Uh, I need you to have no. Uh, oh, and this one. I need to just change this up. I want to make sure that you don't know how to get any. Please stop that. Right click, left click, uh, cancel, 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 can yeah, just cancel all. Okay, travel comes from there. Uh, asphalt comes from there, and that's it. Yeah, I want you to have very, very limited sources because 
I need these roads upgraded to gravel as soon as possible because we can see how close, how slow they drove when it was raining. Okay, my second one is going to be uh, the builder one, which is going to require... Uh, no, it does... Okay, you are the everything. I've written notes. I've written notes to make sure I don't miss any of these details because these are going to be important details. I want you to have uh, dumpers. I want you to have two of the dumpers that go as fast as possible, being those two. I also need you to have another open hull, being, uh, mm, you're expensive, this one. This one's 70 kilometers per hour. It's 9.7 tons for steel compared to seven tons. This one does 13. It's a very small speed difference. I think we're gonna get a bigger one. We're gonna get a bigger one. Okay. Uh, also, I need a covered hull. So, a covered hull, uh, its main difference is you can carry electronics, electronical components. So, on the far right, the one that says 4.5 tons being electrical components, also mechanical components. Uh, in your case, I'm gonna go for the smaller one because these are things that we don't need in high demand, but um, I want them reasonably quickly. So, we're gonna have use left. Uh, I'm going to have you not do roads or footpaths or factory connections. I don't want you touching any of that. Okay, next one is going to be uh, the workers. Now, normally I'd set this guy up to do uh, buses. Uh, we would have a bus that moves some amount of people. I'd normally have two buses. And then I'd also have... Uh, do, 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 uh, cranes, cranes. I want a uh, road crane. That's the one. I'd have a road crane. Um, obviously, having cranes on site definitely speeds up construction. Normally, I had two of each in this particular workshop. In my case, I'm going to go with one of each, and I'm going to go back into uh, open hulls, and I'm going to grab two more open hulls uh, because I want to split the workers in two. I want to have one worker, one here, grabbing these workers these foreign workers because they are going to be one of my limiting factors and also a second one over here grabbing these foreign workers so i want to have two separate construction officers doing that so uh basically i need to duplicate that again uh, i'm going to call you workers two and you i want you to have uh the bus uh we're going to get the 40 passenger one plus i want the uh open hull we want two of those Plus, I want the road crane. I want to have the 26 speed one. Yep, that has the higher speed as well. And I want to change your workers to not grab them from this customs house, but to grab them from this customs house. Okay, so we can split our workforce. Make sure that we're maximizing our workforce wherever possible. Okay, uh, that's that set up. Uh, can I change this? Uh, can I have you not keep that 30% full, but keep that 80% full? Now it's all partially stopped. All right. Uh, with that done, I need to grab my next construction office, which is uh, the builder office. Okay. The builder office is going to... Uh, I need to make sure I set uh, you not to do... Uh, no, not to do roads, footpaths, or factory connections. Uh, same goes with you, because those could be done with machinery rather than manpower. I prefer to use machinery, it's way faster. Uh, okay, you, the builder office. The builder office is going to need uh, excavators, uh, and we're gonna want two of these, plus I'm gonna want uh, concrete mixers two of these because I don't really have any other options uh, speaking of other options I want to get that whole road also marked as uh, can I turn that to active construction cool. I want to get that whole road marked up to get turned to gravel as well Okay. in fact I can technically do two gravel roads at the same time so we're going to to that section, yes. Okay, because I have two bulldozers in here, I can get the two done at the same time. So I'm gonna make sure I have two of them selected. So the builder's now done. Uh, next up, this is gonna be a, no, actually we'll do that one last. Uh, can I get, uh, oh, rename, rename, rename. Uh, dumpers! Uh, we can guess what's gonna go in here. It's gonna be uh, a whole lot of dumpers. I don't want the giant ones that move 25 tons worth of gravel each because they have a max speed of 35. 
We're going to get these slightly smaller ones, moving 10, 10 kilos? 10 kilos at 70 kilometers per hour. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah. And you're going to go max distance. You can build roads and footpaths as well, because, well, that's mainly dumping gravel, and they can dump that on site and then go off and do another job. All right. Next up, we have uh, the asphalt. Uh... Uh, okay, the asphalt one is a little bit special. You're not going to do buildings, not going to do fa- uh, are going to do factory connections, and not going to do conveyors. No, you can do conveyors and pipelines. Okay. Uh, you are going to be important. We're going to have you do a uh, paver, one of those, a, a roll-up, one of those. I also need a open hull to actually transport those around. I didn't look. Uh, you are empty weight of two tons. The paver has an empty weight of five tons, so I need to have an open hull that has at least a five ton carry capacity, which is going to be, well, that one, uh, and we're going to deliver with mechanisms only, we're going to max you out at 3,000 uh, 3, meters, and I also need uh, a dumper. A dumper so you can get in gravel. Also, this also transfer uh, transports the asphalt, and that's it actually. Uh, so we're gonna have you selected as well. Okay, as we can see, as this road is now path, um, they're a little bit faster. We can also see we have already a situation where the customs house is a little bit maxed out. Now I could set some of these to go to this customs house to get materials, but overall it's probably not gonna help me. Uh, actually. The dumpers. The dumpers, you can get all your materials from there instead. So if we open this up, this is now going to say... Uh... Vladivostok? Yeah, it says Vladivostok. Okay. Uh... No, it says Vladivostok. Okay. Uh, cancel all. Confirm. And then specify... There. Okay, now it says Rusty. So we're going to split our gravel into two separate locations. That is, till I get this built. Once this is built, then we'll be in a situation where I'll be able to have uh, a couple of big trucks pick up all the gravel, bring it over here. Once it's all here... Uh, can I speed that up just temporarily? I'll give you a shorter path. Uh, once it's all here and it's all built, uh, then, um, well, we can have everybody pick up their gravel from here, which can be much faster. And like I said, it does the whole bulk transfer thing. Okay. So that's our first plan. And we have our basic plans in, uh, I need to uh, upgrade some more roads. So let's just get that done very quickly. Can I have cancel road? I want to cancel that. So the road is big enough. It could be done with uh, mechanical, well, mechanisms. Mechanisms rather than uh, with manpower. Also, can I cancel that bit of road? And I'm going to do the exact same. I want to upgrade that one. And I want to upgrade that one. And can I cancel road? And do that one. So now everybody can still use this side of the roundabout. And you know what? I think I'm going to cancel that bit as well. Okay. Everybody can use this part of the roundabout. I've also put a simple crossroad in here so they can access all three lanes for now. Um, but also have the asphalt builders doing absolutely nothing. So we're going to upgrade that bit of road to asphalt. Cool. Uh, and for the moment, they can use, well, this road and the little dirt path for the last mile. Cool. So they all have jobs to do. They're going to be busy over there, which means I can now get to planning. So I'm going to turn off active construction. There's a long way to go to get gravel, but so be it. It should fix our traffic jam. Our traffic jam seems to be solved. Uh, dumpers. Uh, can I... The ones that are already on their way there should be fine. We'll change it back to that and see if that... Oh, oh, you're already built. So what do you need? You need concrete, you need steel, you need mechanical parts. And a whole lot of work days. That's not bad. Uh, you... Power lines are in. And you need some bricks and some boards and some people to actually build it. And some steel and some electronic components. Again, not bad. I expect this to be done very quickly. Okay, so we need to talk about towns. Towns are going to need a couple of things. In fact, they're going to need a lot of things, but I'm running out of time, so we need to work through this fairly quickly. Okay, I need to have uh, 
under uh, residential areas and in a house. Um, I'm going to be putting a house right here. The type of house and what sort of house it is and all that sort of details don't matter for now. I just need a house to mark it. On top of that, being that um, it gets a little bit cold around here, I need to have a heating plant. Now, my heating plant can stretch out to 380-ish meters, okay? But I'm going to put one right there for now. Now, with my house, as I said, we can stretch out to 380 meters, but because the game works on a square grid, if we move that at an angle, uh, we can see that that's much further. It's Mm, this angle? Yeah, it's closer to 500 and something if we go at a 45 degree angle, because, you know, it's counting the amount of square tiles between A to B. So, that's something I need to keep in mind. But, with me now knowing where my heating plant is, I can now work out where I'm going to be putting my grocery store. Grocery store is going to need to have, well, heat, otherwise, um, well, all the meat will stay frozen, uh, but so will the populace. Uh, so, I want to put you outside range of my heating station it makes sense trust me uh so we're going to be putting you uh can i hold down controls that little window goes away i'm going to be putting you here okay all right so that's going to be where our grocery store is going to run uh it's going to need a road to hook it into the main road i don't need this built yet but i need a plant on top of that our grocery store is going to need to have well somewhere to get groceries in so we're going to have to have a warehouse plugged in the back of it and that there is a factory connection. Think of a factory connection as basically a forklift highway. So I want to pop one of those right there. Uh, also need to put in some sort of meat storage. This holds 75 tons worth of meat, which is the smallest there is. Uh, but that'll probably be enough for us. Okay, so I want to pop that together. All right, now before I go any further, I need to talk about uh, distances. Distances and travel time. We have footpaths. Footpaths are very, very important because uh, we are a strong believer here in the Republic that you don't get a personal car. You can't dream of a personal car. You can't afford a personal car. Why? Because um, we're not making them yet. I do hope to make them in the future, but I don't make them right now. So, uh, because you can't have a personal car, we need to definitely specify or definitely uh, make sure that we have... Please stop that. Uh, yeah, I know. I need to make sure that um, we have very, very good public infrastructure when it comes to walking. I also need to squeeze things in as much as possible. So, uh, if I'm going to have food here, I'm going to intentionally put a kindergarten right in front of it. For the main reason of, well, transportation. If they can access the uh, food stores, then they should be able to access the kindergarten as well. I'm going to hold down control to make sure it doesn't put in the roads automatically or the footpaths and I'm going to dump you right there okay with that done I now know where my road needs to be and the answer is uh that's too close so the answer is it needs to be here please cool. uh road and road and from there I'm going to want this road to pop around uh That'll do. And... Okay. No. Uh, wrong button. I want to... Number four. Remove that road. Remove that section of road. Okay. Oh, God. That'd be ugly. Sure. Sure. It's all dirt roads. We can always improve them later. Okay. So I want to have my kindergarten right here. It's going to be very, very important we have the kindergarten nice and close to everything also like i said footpaths are super super important because uh people can walk further on a dedicated footpath than they can on a road uh no you should not be too close i also want a dedicated footpath going this way and i want a footpath going this way and a footpath going into that road and another footpath going this way. Okay, lots of footpaths. Uh, I want to hook the market into the footpath as well and you can be plugged in. Okay, all right, so we have some footpaths. We have a kindergarten. I can get that plugged in and I can get that plugged in. And sure, you can have a connection here as well. Okay, all right, so we have uh, food, we have kindergarten, all right couple of other things we're going to need. Uh, obviously houses. I need to have houses. I also need to have uh, a lot of services for the houses. 
services for the houses. We're going to be working sort of all over the place now. But um, it's important that I sort of get things squeezed in as much as possible. So houses. I have many choices for houses. So we have some very small flats that hold anywhere between 20 workers, 30 workers. Yeah, very, very small houses more than flats. Uh, then I have um, larger flats that hold either 50 people or 110 people. There are lots of options, but I need to be able to research them. I don't have research up and running, obviously. Uh, then, of course, we have big houses. Uh, this holds 157 people. But also very, very important down the bottom left-hand corner, we have quality of flats. Uh, this is at 68%, which means they can only ever get to 68% happiness. Which is probably okay, but also it's going to be very, very bad because whether they know it or not, they don't know it yet, they're going to be living in a cloud of pollution. Uh, I'm going to choose to put in uh, the ones that hold 110 people, but um, they have 80%, 7% quality. So therefore they have a higher chance that they could become happy in the future. I don't guarantee that they're happiness, but they have a higher chance of being happy. All right, I'm gonna make sure that I put in a path. Also want a second one of these right here. And then I want a third one uh, here and a fourth one. Please work. Please work. Uh, I need that road to be closer. There we go. I have bits sticking out of them and it's not helping. Uh, okay, if I T to flip, yeah, that should give me the path that I need. Okay, uh, can I run that road through to there? Oh, cool. alright, and can I run a path through to there? We're trying to make sure that their distance to travel is as short as possible. I also need to make sure these are connected into the footpath in every possible location in case they upgrade one of the other locations and um well it cuts off the path because it's currently you know being upgraded to like gravel so they can walk a little bit further on a nice gravel road rather than a pathetic dirt mud road yep uh, can i cancel that bit and that bit and we're gonna run from there to there and then plug that one in and that one in. all right First thing I need to do is I need to go to here and I need to hover over this. If I hover over this, we can see that people can get to, well, the food market. Yep, yeah. it's about 128 meters away, which also brings me to my very next thing I need to handle, which is going to be trash. I need to handle their trash, and I'm going to hope very much so that if I put you here, this is going to attach to both the supermarket, also the kindergarten, and all four of our houses. Our house is holding 110 people each. That is a population of 440. And they have a certain amount of jobs here that they need to do, but I'm hoping I can get enough available. Oh. Oh, okay. Things have happened over here. Uh, can I go to... Uh... Okay, first off, can I go to you? I want you to fill up this fuel station. I want you to get... Uh... Dumpers, uh, one, two, three, and then I want you to pick up, uh, pick up gravel from there, and I want you to dump it there. Uh, I want to set you to be store gravel only, and you have power, you have power, you're good to go. Okay, so I need to get those trucks, which are going to be delivered probably here. Yeah, they've been delivered here. They don't have any fuel, and I forgot to refill this fuel station which means they might have to drive back to the border but it's done okay so we have uh we have houses we have food we're missing a whole lot of things and i need to build a whole lot of things uh but we're gonna need a second road down here because if i'm gonna have houses uh i need to give them some emergency services so i'm gonna go back into uh, state infrastructure i'm gonna give them a small clinic they don't need anything better they'd like things better but that's all they're gonna get on top of that, I'm going to give them a police station again in the small variety. Flip. Uh, there. I also need to get footpaths down here. We'll do that in a little bit. Uh, next thing I need to do is I need to put in some entertainment. Uh, obviously, they love the ability to culture. Uh, they would love the ability to, you know, have a religious belief and all that sort of stuff. But here in the Republic, we don't believe in religion. So instead... Uh, you can have, well, a cinema. A, yeah, cinema. 
All right, on top of that, they're gonna need some sport. Uh, as it gets a little bit cold here in the Republic, uh, we're gonna give you an indoor dynamo right here. And I need to hold the left mouse button, have an excavator physics come over here and flatten the ground so I can throw you in there. Cool. With that done, uh, technically I could swap those two over. I might swap those two over between uh, this video and the next video because I still need a trash in here. Everything is in range of the trash. Uh, well and truly, they can only walk up to 125 minutes to a trash yard, but uh, that is um, some basics, some basics. I, they still need a whole lot more things. In fact, one of the other things that I think I need to throw in is... Uh, we threw in that culture. Uh, can you have a house of culture? That's the one. Uh, which I'm going to throw in right beside the market as well. Uh, sure, you'll fit there. And the last thing, really the last thing I'm going to need is the bus stop. If I have a bus stop as well and they can reach the bus stop, that means I can bring them over to the bus stop. They can jump on a bus that I'll have to set up and then they can go places to go to work. Yeah, the last thing that I'm missing, which I haven't mentioned yet, is going to be heating and that is going to require a small heating plant, which conveniently goes right there. Okay, uh, my heating plant is going to need uh, workers, which means one road to there, one road to there. And if I hover over that, you can reach 230 meters. It's not perfect, but it'll do. And the last emergency service that I didn't throw in is going to be a fire station. I'm going to throw a fire station right beside the heating plant because the heating plant is going to be burning a whole lot of coal to make a whole lot of heat. So it seems like an appropriate place to put the fire station. And I'm going to plug you in. Okay, again, if I go to you and I say, hey, what's your walking distance? You can get to both of those. If I upgrade the footpaths to be, well, gravel footpaths, then um, they can definitely get there and probably get a little bit further. Okay, with that done, can I cancel roads? We're just going to have them do a couple of jobs, uh, being that and that. And they're both turned off. Uh, can I have that and that both be started yes so we're gonna have them do a little bit more graveling uh, but this is where i'm gonna have to leave the first episode it's already long enough i've got through as much as possible i need to get go through and double check everything we still haven't added some important city services like power or water or sewage we have dealt with trash at least we also need to um probably start looking at the winter that's going to be coming up not terribly soon but fairly soon and make sure that um i uh, hopefully get more of the roads done and um some plowing done plowing done which should be uh very very important too yeah so uh i'm gonna leave the very first episode here i'm gonna thank you guys so much for watching i am gonna remind you that yes we're gonna have an episode probably fairly soon for the second episode and um this is gonna be a long series a very very long series so if you're interested if you want to know more by all means hit the subscribe button also don't forget if this is the first episode you're watching and you're not catching it when it first went live there is a pin comment below and also in the in, in the description and the pinned comment like below is the link to the playlist. By all means, start episode one, work your way forward. Anyway, with all that said and done, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the Republic next time. All right, bye.